Now let us learn how to find out the time complexity from the program code. So when we analyze the program code, we get a proper function, time function. So how to get the time functions? We will learn about this. So for explaining, I have taken three example program codes. That is three functions I have taken. Now how to analyze? We assume that every simple statement in a function or a program takes one unit of time. What does it mean by simple statement? The statement may be having arithmetic operations, assignment or conditional statement. If it is more complex, then we have to study that also in detail. So let us see how to get the time function and how to find the time complexity. So first I will take this one. This is swap function taking two parameters and interchanging the values of x and y. What are the statements inside this? These are the three statements. How much time each statement takes? One unit of time because it is just an assignment. So total time is 3. So the function of n is 3. So we got the time function as 3. So that 3 is constant order of 1. Why it is constant? Because the degree of n is 0 here. 3 means 3 into n to the power of 0. That is the meaning. So anything power of 0 is written as what? 1. So it is constant. So this was a simple function and it is taking constants. So it's not a proper C function. I have not written data types and all. Just a pseudocode I have written. Now this is exactly like a C functions. Let us look at this one. Now here. Let us look at the statement. First statement. Assignment. One unit of time. Then. Assignment. Condition. Assignment. This is plus plus. Increment. Just an operator. But. Is it executed just one time? No, this is a loop. These statements will execute for n times. See, if you know for loop, this will execute for one time, initial. And this increment will happen for n times. Condition also n times, but one time the condition will fail, so it will stop. So this is total n plus 1. So we can ignore all other and take just n plus 1. So just for loop, we are looking at this one, just for loop, this n plus 1. Let us say time taken is n plus 1. Then you can ask me why you are leaving this one and this one. Okay, if you want to include, then it should be 2n plus 1. That's your choice. But mostly we find like this in textbooks, every author says this one. But mostly we focus on this conditional statement. So I am writing the conditional statement. Otherwise, if you sum up all these, this is 2 times of n plus 1. Then next, what is there inside? This is a statement. It's a simple assignment and arithmetic operation addition. How many times? As long as loop is running. How many times loop will run? N times. This is N. Then at last, return S. How many times this will execute? Just one time. So total how much? I'll find the sum of all these. 2 times N. So the time function is 2N plus 1, 2, 3. 2N plus 3. This is the time function we got. And what is the degree of this polynomial? This is order of n, degree 1. So we write n. So the time is order of n. Now already in the previous video I have shown you that when you have a for loop which is repeating for n times going from 0 to n and i++ plus plus every time, it's obviously n. So even when I have check each and every line also, final answer is order of n. That's what. If you focus on the processing, then you can directly get the answer this one. If you are interested in this function, then you can get it. Line by line you analyze and get it. So let us see the procedure actually. This is sum of all n elements in an array. Sum of all n elements in an array. How much time it will take? It depends on number of elements. How many elements are there? n elements. Time is how much? Out of n. Simple. Now while doing line by line, it needs little practice. Okay, so I have shown you two examples. So based on this, you can practice and find out the time from the code also. Now the last one remaining is this one. Let us find out the time. So I'll remove that. One. Now this one, this is a for loop. As I said, this will take n plus 1 times. So n plus 1 times the execution will happen. Now anything inside the loop will execute for n times. Every statement. So what is there inside this loop? This one is there. This one and this one. So I have finished with outer loop. Outer loop is over. Now inside that, this is not a normal simple statement. 
just like this normal simple statement I have taken n for this also I have taken n n but if you look at this this is also a loop then what about its time the time for this one is how many times the condition is checked n plus 1 so this is already n because it is inside this outer loop so shall I write plus n plus 1 or into n plus 1 nested loop is there nested loop is there right so it should be into it should be into multiplication so this is into n plus 1 then this is this statement is inside this for loop also so this loop will repeat it for n more time so this is into n so that's it so if you want you can watch it again and find out how to do this one right now finally we can prepare a function time function what is the time function n square n square so 2n square plus n n 2n plus 1 this is the time function we got what is the degree 2 so it's order of n square time is order of n square this is how from the time function we get the highest degree of a function and that we represent it as time now I am calling it as order of if you are interested you can say big O of n square or theta of n square and omega of n square but when to use these we will be learning at the end of the course as I said but by that time you can even call order of or even you can use big O instead of order you can say big O right but in my videos I'll be calling it as order of every time and at last I'll show you one more example I'll remove these things and I'll write one small example program then I'll explain you so here is an example I have just taken a skeleton of two function function 1 and function 2 now if you want to find out the time complexity as I said every statement we should consider it as one unit of time so how much time this function is taking I want the time taken by this function only fun one only right then what is there inside just one line one unit of time so it's constant wrong that's a function how much time that function is taking you find out that one don't say that statement is one okay look at this one this is having a loop so loop will take order, order of n time so it's n so the time taken by this function is not one it is actually n so in turn the time taken by this function is also n it's not one it's not one because it is calling a function which is taking order of n time so definitely that time will be spent by this fun one only so definitely that time also belongs to fun one because fun one is using fun two and fun two is taking order of n time so that's how look into the details of these statements and try to find out the time if there are simple statement you can directly write down the time as one if it is complex then see what it is doing then based on that you can write down the time so mostly loops are making the time as n or n square or maybe n cube so mostly it depends on loops that you are using file loop for loop or while loop they both are similar sometimes students think that for loop okay I understood while loop how to do that so for loop if it is repeating from 1 to n an incremental loop counter control loop then it is n if it is behaving in a different way then definitely you have to read the code and understand maybe it is log n or a root n what it is you have to find out that so that's all in this video we have seen the time functions or space complexity already I have explained you in the previous video so space complexity also we can prepare a function so that's all in this video